JCConf 二零一八精彩议程，由 Soft Leader 松林科技保险核心系统领导厂商 ，OS 号召各路顶尖人才携手放眼亚太 ，Line 拉近你我的距离，赞助为您播出。Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So, thank you very much for coming to my session. This session is、uh, how to start functional programming in Scala Day One. So, this is kind of introductory session about functional programming. So, let me start with the first. So, please raise your hand if you are a Scala programmer. Oh, <laughs> so many over there. Thank you. Okay. So, then, so please raise your hand. Are you? If you're familiar with、uh, functional programming stuff, very few. Okay, so that's great. So, so I hope this session is relevant for all the attendees. So, first, who am I?、Uh, oops, I'm Taisuke. So coming from Tokyo. So I'm an organizer of the Scrum Master Conference held in Tokyo annual basis. And、uh, also doing the、um, technical advisory at Stephanie Horizon, basically for the training for the new people. And so this month,、uh, we opened the Scarmati website, and CFP is open now. So, so it's good chance to the this Japan students. So we have some travel grant also the, for the speakers if you if the speaker wants. So, so. If you are interested in the please, so we'd welcome your tr、uh, your try to the our the proposal on the CFP. Then, the let's start the、uh, the content. The this is about our、uh, functional programming. Okay, what is functional programming? The functional programming is the paradigm to construct a software with composing computations like your functions. It's an in cultural definition. That's、uh, the key is that kind of we think that the、uh, software has a huge、uh, function, and、uh, that function is、uh, the result of the、uh, compo composition of the functions, smaller functions. So the learning functional programming is you can learn the way to make the functions、so、computations are smallish and composable, then sometimes inducible. Inducible from the more fundamental functions. So, I believe that helps、uh, keep your software clean and extensible, even in objective-oriented programming. In fact, the Scala is indeed a functional language, since the、uh, function is a fast cross system. But it's not very strict about the functional programming stuff. So, Scala is recommend the. Leverage the both of the strengths in object-oriented programming and functional programming because it unifies FP and OOP. Okay, so today I will cover the basically three topics. The first is the function compositions, and the second is the function purity. The last the, the abstraction of the functions, certain functions, and the compos composition of them. Okay, so the first topic is the composing functions methods. Oops. Okay, what is a function? The function is a computation to transform the inputs to outputs. So in Scala, it's an instance of the function n traits. Function n means the functional type which takes n arguments. It's The arrow to be、uh, from zero to twenty-two. Actually, there is no clear reason. It, it's up to twenty-two.、Uh, so that's the sample code is a, a sample of the, of the instance of the function one. It is a one argument function, taking an、uh, integer argument and just a double. Very simple. The int our int is a just a type alias to function one. The function one is obviously composable because it has a composing functions like and then and compose method. Both of the methods takes、uh, the function one argument, then returns a composed function. Like、uh, 
So double compose double means quadruple. So just passing the result of the double into the next double function. Then next is a function 2 to 22. Actually, they don't have those kind of methods, but there is a curling function. Curling means converting a multiple argument function to function one. Let's see the, the, the simplest example of the function two. This is the combined function. It's very obvious. Just taking uh, two arguments, into uh, two, two integer arguments, and sum up them. So this is function two. Uh, function two instance that it doesn't have the compose or on the method. However, it has curry the method. If you call curry method of that function two, it's really converted to function one. So function one instance that returns a another function one instance. That is the key. That's why so function two to function twenty two can be composed of a curring double and then combine carried. It's, this expression is valid because combine carried returns a function one instance. That's why so function one to function 22 are very composable, I see. Okay, so actually this is a very, very fundamental of the function programming because these functions can take another function as an argument like uh, on the method or a compose method, or return function value, like a curry method. This is to say the function is a first class citizen. The first class citizen can be taken in argument or return value. As well as those functions like undoing, and compose, or curry, are called higher order functions. It takes a uh, function argument or returning your functions. Above two are uh, really the fundamental of the function programming. That's why it's a Scala is a functional language, I say. So next is the method and type parameters. That's it's a, you know all methods, right? So the difference from functions in Scala is method is defined by def keyword and the method can be expanded to function n by underscore. It is called it the expansion. Just call underscore. So there, so it returns a function one instance in this example. So also the method can take a type parameters or an implicit parameter list. I will show you later. And uh, while functions cannot take those kind of things. For example, the sequence in Scala has a method map, which modifies the elements into another element. The map method takes the uh, function one as an argument. So like this, so you can just map the, the integer of the sequence of the integer and uh, just add uh, one. Then so you get a uh, next sequence. So what I show here uh, can be combined all together like this sample. The carried and composed to other the function, then passed to into the uh, map method in sequence. So this is a very the trivial, but it might be boring, but it's kind of the really the fundamentals. So now we know the function composition basics. All functions so far are pure functions. So the next topic would be the function purity. So they always return the same value with the same arguments. So we call it pure. This is, uh, uh, this is very important uh, feature. So because some, uh, some of the effect, side effects breaks this rule like a changing any state in the function or that function depends on the mutable state. 
feature may change from the outside of the function. Or just put the standard output, file input or output, or throwing a function in a function. A throwing exception, sorry. So all above side effects may change the function behavior. In this context, the behavior is uh, the what return, what value will be returned with same arguments. That behavior might depend on the state if function has side effects. So this is a simple example of the function which has a, a side effect. The next function, there is a mutable value that's a counter and the next is just adding the argument into the counter and uh, return the new value. Next one will be the one, then call next one again, it will be two. So the question, next and then next and then next, just composing three times and the passes three as an argument. What does it return? Actually, no. 16. One plus three, and then next, it will be, it'll be doubled, then four. Then now this is eight, then and then this eight is added to the next. So that's why it's so a 16. So it's a double, double, double. So, yeah, see? So it's really hard to predict how it behaves, even though this is a really simple example. That's why so you have to care the order of the execution and each state in every steps. So this is really, you know, annoying. So it's not handy. So even though we make that function is very smallish and composable, however, it's hard to predict how it behaves. So the key is localize the side effects. Of course, some side effects is mandatory. So side effects can be the kind of the objectives to create a software. So you cannot remove all of the, soft, the side effects from your software. However, you can localize the side effects in a certain, uh, certain module or a certain statement. Then rest of that uh, program can be the pure. So, if you keep a certain module pure, so you can predict how it behaves easily, and you can compose the small parts into the large parts. That is uh, the way to think in the functional programming. So, excluding the side effects, the expression can be replaced with its evaluation, with keeping the meaning of the program. It is called referentially transparent. Actually. Uh, you don't need to remember the word right now on. However, that is, you may see this, this keyword many times if you study the functional programming. That's why I introduce it. So the key is, so rather than just remembering a keyword, so I'd recommend to the, know the way to localize the side effects in your software. Okay. Next would be the, abstracting from functions. Okay, let's rethink the combine function we introduce. The combine is just summing up the two arguments. So this would be uh, considered as a binary operation of integer. Actually, it's very simple. However, it's amazingly useful for fold-like operation. Here is a fold left, one with a fold like operation. Signature order of sequence, A. The fold left takes the two arguments. One would be the default value, and another would be the binary operation. In this case of integer, or the element, it really depends on the element of the sequence. For example, so it falls a sequence the, from the left to right like your sequence one, two, three, four, left, zero, and uh, adding just, the, and passing the binary operation of summing up. It means, first, 
then uh, summed up the default value, the its first value, and the first element of the sequence. Then it, it's operated in this function. The result of the this you know this expression is summed up to next element plus two. Then the result of this expression is summed up to the last element here. So folding from left to right. This is the fold left. Okay. So the, the let's apply the combine function into the fold left operation. This is the semantics of the same as the previous sample code, but just replace the second argument with the combine function we defined. So combine function works well in the sequence of int. Then how about sequence of option int? You might have the option, the sequence of option int. So yeah, it should be manageable. Just defining the combine option function, it's kind of binary operation function of the option int. Then the option int, the depending on the pair of the option int, so if both of them are known, so this means no value, then returns a known. Then if the one of them is sum and the rest is known, then returns a sum of the but value. Then if both of them are sum, just summing up the internal value of the left and right. This kind of binary operation can be defined, and you can pass that combined options function into for the left second arguments, and it can be applied to the sequence of option int. Okay, it's a bit, looks complicated, but it can be manageable. Okay, then how about sequence of option string? Do we have to define combine option blah 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 for each option type? Hmm, that would be annoying. So, as we did the in the function composition, so we would like to reuse the parts as much as possible and composing them. So let's think how to compose it. The way to reuse the part, small parts we defined under composing them is abstraction. Abstraction from the functions. So in the fold left operation, we see the following ones are required for the element of the sequence. The first one is returning the default value, which will be applied to first argument of fold left. In integer case, it will be zero. The second one is binary operation, which is how to treat and how to fold the sequence of a certain type. So if both of them are given, so you can do the fold the any sequence, right? So let's abstract these two and make a certain type for them. We call the type monoid. Actually, that name comes from the category theory, but you don't need to care about it, about a name. So I'd like you to know that how it works, not a name. Okay, the monoid. Monoid can be defined as follows. It takes a type parameter, and the first method will be the empty, which stands for the default value of the type T. The second method will be combine. This is something like the combine function we defined, but it's already generalized by the type parameter T. Uh, that then with monoid, you can define the monoid instance for integer and string. So defining the monoid instance is 
the defining the how to behave, how what is the default value of that type and what is the binary operation of that type. In this case, integer, the default value would be zero and the combine function is just like summing up. Of course, you want to product the multiply the each other so you can change that how to implement the combine fun method. In this case, just adding, just summing up. By the way, so this keyword of the implicit is a, a keyword to pass a value as an argument, as an argument implicitly. It is so-called implicit parameters, and this is implicit value. So actually, I don't do a deep dive on the implicit because it takes so long time to explain the whole the implicit function. However, so you can, okay, so you can see that the implicit is just working, the passing the value as an uh, argument implicitly. That's enough. The next will be the monoid of string instance. The default values of a string will be there the empty, the just a double quotation, empty string, and the second, the combined method, this binary operation of strings, elevator, just adding the string and string, just concat concatenated. So next of the key, so induce a monoid instance of option T. So, if the given option T, so if there is a monoid instance of T, then we can induce the option uh, option monoid instance against the type T. Okay. In this method, it takes an implicit parameter that is a uh, that is a uh, argument list that receive the value implicitly. If that the same type of value is defined in the same scope, so its method returns option of monoid option T, which given T is the type which is defined in monoid. Then the default value the empty is just a noun. The combined method, it is very similar with the monoid instance, no, not the monoid instance, the combined, fun combined option function we defined beforehand. That's just the fourth case clause will be generalized. That's delegate the, uh, delegate the the binary operation into the monoid instance of T, right? That's pretty straightforward, but it works very well. Okay. And also, this is kind of inducible. It's, it's kind of induced from the uh, another monoid instance. Then, next example is uh, composing the monoids. The in this case, we use a tuple, tuple two. The, this, the composing function, composing method is taking uh, two implicit parameters, monoid S and monoid T. The S and T is a type of the tuple, the element of the tuple. Since it's the, uh, in this case, we think only the tuple two. That's why so it takes a two pi parameters. Then it returns a monoid S T. Then returning S T will be the pair of the uh, both of the monoids of the element, the empty value, and the combined method. Uh, it's also the very straightforward. Just summing up the first element with the uh, monoid S and uh, just uh, just calculate the, in the calculate is 
with a binary operation defined in monoid T. That's very, that works. Then, so, uh, define the follow left, my own follow me method to use monoid. This is pretty, for, pretty straightforward, and it's just delegating the uh, calculation into the, the forward left method already defined in SCAR standard library, but it just taking the monoid method. Then, pass the value into the first argument of the forward left and second argument of the forward left. They're using this one. So, okay, this is my forward left taking just a sequence of the int, then returns the six. Okay, this because of the monoid of int. Then if you pass a sequence of option int, so it uses monoid of option int, then it also uses monoid of int. Then it su it's successfully calculated and it returns the sum of four. The next will be there all together. Sequence of option of triple of the int and string. Okay, so it uses monoid of option int string. The option of the monoid int uh, int string uses the monoid of int and string. The monoid int and string uses monoid of int and monoid of string. The all of the model instances are used in this in this method call. But that works. So success it is successfully calculated as a it returns the sum of the three A B, returning that value. So now you enjoy the fold left for any type with if that type monoid is defined. The next will be a bit more curious stuff. So let's define a new fold operation like a fold map using a monoid. Fold map is a method is folding, uh, mapping the value in the sequence and fold in a single traverse. It's just a fold plus map. So it takes also the monoid, uh, monoid instance and then just calculating the fold left by fold left function in scan standard libraries. I've combined L and the the light value would be the calculator with the the uh, transforming functions passed in the second argument here. So if you pass example C, C one, two, three, and two storing function, then all of the element of the sec one, two, three is two string and fold. So that's why so this fold map invocation uses monoid string, monoid string, then just returning the one, two, three string. Not six. Okay, so actually this is quite useful in our real life. For example, if you have huge collection and you don't want to traverse it many times, then you can do this kind of the tricks with in, in very easy way because we have already defined the how to operate as a monoid instance and we can reuse it. That's why it's be quite simple but very powerful calculation. Okay, so then let's get up the monoid. Actually, monoid is a type for binary operation and the default value against a T type. This kind of type is called type class. Because by defining a monoid T instance against a T type, new behaviors are introduced, added into T type. In this case, integer, string, 
option and pair the triple two. Newly get the operations, which are the default value and also the uh, binary operation, right? This kind of type is so called type class. That is above the exclamation means that adding new behaviors without modifying their code base or extending that class. This is a typical benefit of a type class. The type class is coming from the functional language Haskell to constrain a type parameter and admit a new function to its type. But in our context, it's more OOP context, it means adding a new behaviors into existing types without changing the code base, nor ex without extending their classes. And we can compile in separately. So if that given class is provided in standard library or under the library, but you can add this kind of new behavior. That's quite powerful. So even string type, which we can't extend or modify it, it can be added new behaviors. So this kind of the technique will be also called the ad hoc polymorphism because it's the ad hoc added a new behaviors. The type classes is not so, is, you know, the uh, real techniques. So it's already implemented. It's already defined in Scala standard library so many times. For example, the ordering would be the really straightforward type class is to define the natural ordering of type T. It is used, already used in sorted method in sequence in Scala standard library. And so you can just call the sorted method against the, se the certain sequence. And if the element of the sequence has a ordering type class instance, then that sequence can be successfully sorted in natural ordering as defined in ordering instance. So if you want to change the, the natural ordering of that type, you can provide another implementation of the ordering. So you can, pro it will be pluggable. It will be pluggable. So type class works well with object-oriented programming. Uh, because it's really, you know, the, going the same direction the object-oriented programming. So because type class makes the type more extensive, that is really in line with the open closed principles that are really the popular in object-oriented programming. Like it is open for extension and closed for the modification. So it can be extens it will be extensible without a modification. Okay. So that in this session that we introduce uh, uh, how to compose a functions and how to abstract a function to be the composable. Then so actually it's of course uh, not the end of the journey. So this is just the beginning point of the, the learning of functional programming. So if you are interested in that stuff, so I'd recommend the functional programming in Scarab as book. That is quite the widely accepted books and the greater introduction. So it's originally written in English, but it has a Chinese version. So if you like, so you can try it. And also that there are always open source projects Many, so the both of the Scarzit project and the CATS project, they have tons of type classes in against uh, their own data types as well as standard data types. What I show here, like a monoid, is also defined, of course, and uh, also the foldable type class instance 
is also defined on the both of the libraries. The foldable provides a, so the behavior of that type can be folded. Okay, so it's a bit early though, but any questions? There's many companies in Japan mm -hmm. to use Scala to develop their service. There's yes. Uh, I think yes. So actually, so I wouldn't compare with uh, other languages though, but there are the, I'm feeling that the, I mean, the, the, the companies using Scala is, the number of the companies is increasing. And also, especially for the auto tech region, so actually the key players in Japanese market is using basically Scala right now. So, and uh, another interesting example is like uh, Zozo. Zozo is a kind of e fashion EC giant, also uses Scala very recently, and there also mm, so many, so many. So actually, you can visit the Scala Master website because uh, there are kinds of sponsors. That, that most of the sponsors use Scala, and also the the, some of the speakers come from these sponsors uh, by winning uh, that CFP selection, and uh, they talk about their their work, the, their architecture, and the how to use Scala in their service. So you can see the kind of the tons of the industry example from there. Thank you. I uh, I like to ask about for that and uh, the uh, compose and then uh, the future developers. Future. Can I combine this uh, together? Futures? Um, no, fold left and, uh -huh. uh, and then function composing. Uh, uh, fold left and another uh, function can be composable mode. Yes. Actually, yes, it, they, it can composable uh, uh, since uh, for the left, also the function, uh, one argument functions uh, with calling. So, and yeah. And uh, yeah, and so without just the, the uh, query, the invoking the kind of composer and the method, you can pass just the functions into the second argument for the left, right? As we did in, yes. we pass a combined function into the fold left. So it is kind of the f uh, composing composition of the function, right? Um, so in mm. in also in this sense, so that fold left have to be composed, so to use it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So if you have any questions, please feel free to catch me in this venue, or you can mention me in Twitter. Okay, thank you very much.